Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to scrape these tables from Yahoo Finance that involves analyst estimates. Now this will include earnings estimates, revenue estimates, earnings history, EPS trends, EPS revisions, and growth estimates. So just by looking at these tables, we can check and see visually that some of these columns we can simply just are by, such as these two, since they have the same column names, but some don't, such as this last table. So in R, we're gonna go ahead and scrape all these tables and reformat the shape to look something similar to this table, where each of the table names will actually be a row. So as you can see for the first six rows, this data comes from the revenue estimates. So if we take a look at row three, this data represents the low estimate for the current current quarter ending in June 2022. This is the value. And then we have some stock information such as the ticker, the date we grabbed this information, and then the open, high, low, close volume change and percentage change for this ticker on this particular day. So as you can see, we have 14 columns and 112 different rows. And by having this table, we can go ahead and manipulate the data to extract any of these categories. So let's take a look at the script to see how we can get this table. All right, so here are some of the packages we're going to require. Don't run the second line. This line is just to call in some functions so that I can grab data from my database. But I have coded these so that it will be able to grab open, high, low, close historical data from Yahoo Finance. Now, this first function that we have is called format K and B. So here we just pass in the string and it'll test whether it contains a K, M, or B, and then just replace it with the correct number of zeros and return that as a numerical variable. So we'll go ahead and run this function. Now to scrape the table that I showed you from Yahoo Finance, we need to call get analyst estimates. And if we open up this function, all we're passing in is the ticker. It'll go ahead and format the URL to the correct page. We're gonna go ahead and read HTML by passing in our URL. And then we just simply locate all the tables found in that page. And we save that into all tables. Now, as I previously mentioned, some of these tables have the same column headers and that's for table one, two, four, and five. Now by passing in the location of the tables, we're gonna go ahead and extract that table turn it into a data frame. We're also going to replace the first column name with estimates just so that everything R binds correctly. So here I'll run through an example. I'm just going to assign Tesla as my ticker. I'm going to run this chunk and then we're going to use R bind fill to row bind all these tables. Now we take a look at new table. We have this table looking similar to the one on the page. Now what we're going to be doing is extracting the dates from these column names. The way I'm going to be doing that is by locating these parentheses and just splitting those dates. So here we scroll up. So as you see on this line, we're going to split by parentheses, convert that as a data frame. We need to also remove the closing parentheses. And from there, we can extract our new columns and the new rows. So I'll go ahead and run this block. And now we're just going to simply replace our column names with the formatted ones. So if we run this, take a look at new table, we have effectively removed the dates from the column names. Now we're just gonna add our dates in a separate column and add that to our main table. So if we run this chunk, take a look at new table. Now we see that this has moved down a level. So we have ending and then the correct dates. We're later gonna transpose this, but for now we're just gonna add it as a row. All right, so now continuing on with our script, now we need to format our last table, which is the growth estimates. So if we run that, take a look at growth estimates. Now for most of the tickers I've called, I see no data for industry sectors or S&P 500, but I'm just gonna leave it as is in case there are some tickers that we do have this data for. Now we're gonna go ahead and format this table so that we can add it to our main table. We're gonna extract our column names here. I'm gonna replace the first column name with estimates just to keep everything consistent. We're gonna transpose our table, add a column type. We're gonna pull our row names and add that as a column instead. I'm gonna remove the first row and drop the row names. Now we're gonna add the correct column names. Now, if we take a look at growth estimates, we have effectively reshaped this and transposed it. Now we need to replace this ticker and we're gonna replace that with a generic name so that if we do end up calling this for multiple tickers, this row will be standardized. So in our script, we're gonna replace that with EPS growth estimate divided by last year. So we run that. And if we take a look at that table again, we see the change. All right, so continuing on with our script. Now we're gonna R bind our main table with our growth estimates table. And if we take a look at new table, everything up to the six columns stays the same. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we see our growth estimates for these last four rows. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and reorder our table. So I'll go ahead and run this line. Now I'm gonna reformat the values for the current quarter, next quarter, 
this year and next year's data. So for each of these four, the process is the same. We're gonna pull in the first three columns from our new table, which contain all the information for the current quarter. We're gonna add a column so that we know what quarter this is for or year. We're gonna rename the third column to value. We're gonna add our dates for ending and then drop the first row. So if we run this chunk, we'll take a look at this year. So now we have reshaped that table and we see the type, the estimates, the value, what quarter or year this is for. And then finally, we're adding the date. Now we can finally group these tables. So I'm gonna R bind the current quarter, next quarter, this year and next year. And then in this line, I'm just moving columns around. So if we run that and take a look at our new table, we have our type, the estimate, what quarter or year this is for, the actual date for that quarter or year, and then finally the last column will be our value. Now that we have this grouped, we can add the final table, which is our third table. We follow the same process where we extract the table, transpose it, return it as a data frame, and this is for EPS history. So I'm gonna run these two lines and we'll take a look at EPS history and see what the table looks like. Now we need to do a bit of formatting so that this table looks like our main table so that we can just R bind this data. So in our script here, I'm gonna extract the values for each of the columns. I'm gonna reformat the date, reformat the names, just to get it looking like our main table. So let's go ahead and run these lines. Now if we scroll up, now we can row bind our main table with our EPS estimates. So let's run this line, take a look at our new table again. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, now we can see our EPS data. All right, so up to this point, we have gathered all the data from the website and made it all fit into one table. Now we need to format these values and return these as numerical variables so that we can analyze this data. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is removing these NAs and I'm gonna be replacing NAs with zero. Now I'm gonna fix the percentages. I'm gonna be using STR detect to get me the location of where these percentage signs are located. And then given the location, I can just return that as a numerical variable by removing that percentage sign and dividing by 100. So let's run these two. Now we can use our first function to remove any Bs, Ms, or Ks and returning those variables as numeric. So again, following the same steps as before, we're gonna first locate which values contain a B, M, or K. And then given the location, we're we're gonna format K and B. So let's run this block. Now we take a look at our new table and we see that forever new estimates, it got rid of the Bs and it returned it in the correct format. All right, so the next step is to add the stock ticker, the date we scraped this, and then we're gonna call get quote from quant mod to add the open, high, low, close, volume, point change and percentage change. So if we run this, and we take a look at new table. Now we see the extra additional columns for the ticker date and the open, high, low, close volume data. And now that we have this table, we can go ahead and call multiple tickers and it'll all get grouped in the same format. All right, so let's close these out. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this function. Go ahead and run it. We're gonna grab some analyst estimates for Netflix. We'll save that into new table. We'll take a look at that table and we see we got the same number of entries and the same number of columns. Now, if you wanna do this for multiple tickers, just assign your tickers here and we're gonna use L apply or PBL apply. We're gonna pass the list of tickers. We're gonna get the analyst estimates for each of these. And if it did not encounter any errors, it'll go ahead and return that table. So let's go ahead and assign our tickers and then we'll run that block. And since this got returned as a list, we need to row bind all the elements within in that list. So I'm gonna be using our bind list. We take a look at that table. Now we have 448 different entries or rows and 14 different columns. So if we scroll down, we can see data for a different ticker. Now from here, you can either save this table to analyze later, but I have built some functions that you can use to extract elements. So here we have a function to compare PEs. We're gonna pass in our main table, which will be AE, and what ticker you wanna grab PE ratios for. And all this is doing is just subsetting. So as you see, we are subsetting to get our closing price. We are subsetting to get this year's EPS. And then we're gonna use our closing price and dividing that by this year's estimates in EPS. And this will return this year's PE. We do the same for the forward PE, current PE, rolling PE, and then we combine all the data, format the column names, and return that as a table. So if we go ahead and minimize this. And we get the PEs for Netflix. Take a look at that table. 
So here we have our data, which is the ticker, the date, closing price, current PE, rolling PE, year end PE, and next year's PE. Now we can do this for all the tickers in our table. Again, we're gonna pass our tickers as a list. We're gonna apply this function. We're gonna go ahead and row bind all of our data. Take a look at PE. Now we see all of our tickers, closing prices, current PE, rolling PE, year end PE, and next year's PE. All right, similarly, we can get other information such as EPS revisions. And again, I'm just subsetting our main table to the ticker the user provides. And all this is essentially just reformatting. And since most of these are for the last seven and 30 days, I'm gonna add some stock data to see the price change in the stock given the analyst revision. So here we see we're calling get symbols. We're going to add the return by extracting the stock price in the past week and in the past month. And we're going to add the returns. So if we minimize this function, go ahead and run it. We're going to get the EPS revisions for all of our tickers within our table. Now we need to row bind all of our results. And if we take a look at that data, we can take a look at Google. So this is today's closing price, the EPS revision for the current quarter, which ends in June 2022. It looks like one analyst downgraded it within the last 30 days. And in the past 30 days, we can see that this stock closed down approximately 4%. All right, so depending on what you're looking for, we can calculate different things with the analyst estimate data. So I provided you with two functions that you can use to get data from our main table and how to get analyst estimates for multiple tickers. Well, guys, this concludes the tutorial. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.